Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast, where we celebrate individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the outdoors. Today's episode is part of a podcast series produced in collaboration with Visit Johnson City and regional partners hosting the Outdoor Writers Association of America, the OWAA's, and inaugural Field Fest event. And our guest today to kick us off is Ann Ross. Ann is the Director of Tourism for the Morris County Chamber of Commerce in Northeast Tennessee. Now, Morristown is in the county seat of Hamlin County, a beautiful area of the state. And Ann, I'm so very excited to have you join us uh, on the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast and being a part of this partnership uh, with Visit Johnson City and uh, getting involved with Field Fest. Well, we're really excited about the opportunity to be involved with the inaugural Field Fest, to be one of those partners, and specifically to be able to do this podcast with you, Howard, so I can tell everybody about all the cool things in Morristown. That is fantastic. Now, how long have you been affiliated with Morristown? In the I have been with the Chamber for, um, this starts my 11th year. I have been in the tourism industry for well, 33 years. Yeah, a little bit of a career there, I think. Uh, just a bit. Okay. And as a destination for travel and this this area of the state what what makes it unique in, in your area within morristown and, and in the county what what are some of the unique facets of, of this area well to begin with um like a lot of east and northeast tennessee we are approximately a one day's drive from 75 percent of the population mm -hmm. east of the mississippi we're an easy destination to get to either from I-81, I-40, I-75, or the halfway point between Knoxville and Bristol. We are an hour away from Great Smoky Mountains National Park and all of the attractions in Sevier County, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, Sevier. In fact, we mark it. Um, ourselves in Sevier County, um, we're a little off the beaten path, a little more relaxed than things are in Sevier County. If you want to get, once you've done the Smokies, and if you want more of that outdoor glory, we're a great place to come because we have the third most visited state park, Panther Creek State Park here. Um, this is really a great outdoor destination for folks. And the, when you say the folks, we're, we're, you're talking families with young kids, adults, uh, folks that are, have retired and just want to stay outdoors and enjoy the, just the hiking and the fishing, the biking activities like that. Anyone who enjoys being outdoors, outdoor activity, no matter what their age, will find something that suits their fancy in Morristown. Okay. Now, in, in, inside the city proper, I definitely want to talk a little bit about that. And perhaps at the end of the, our episode, we'll kind of curate a you know, family or couple coming to Morristown for the first time and great way to enjoy themselves if they've never been here. As you get out into the, the various parks, how accessible is it for folks that maybe might have a little bit of a disability or some type of physical challenge? Well, most, uh, a lot of Panther Creek State Park is accessible. The access to Cherokee Lake is accessible. Several of the hiking trails are accessible at the park. Um, all of our city parks are accessible. And I'm really glad you asked that question because we have a brand new city park 
which is completely accessible. It was designed and built specifically for those with physical challenges. Um, naturally, it's geared towards children, but we see all kinds of families there. It's just a wonderful park. It's called Jolly Park. It's named after um, a local philanthropist who is, has passed away and whose family built this park specifically in memory of him. It's a great, great facility. Okay. Very good. And that's good to hear is, and I, and I am continuing to hear more and more of the, of the county, well, the local within the city, but the county and then the state parks are doing a lot of work to help make their trails truly accessible. Obviously there's going to be trails. It's just not possible. Sure. How, how it's because you want to bring people to state and want people spending money. And as another guest once said, you want those cash registers to sing. And part of it is to, so everybody can enjoy uh, the, the, the beauty that, that is available. I, I am curious with the involved, uh, with the OWA's inaugural Field Fest event, what will you be sharing with our members and other visitors who are going to be coming to this event? And how, what are some of the things that you have planned or is that perhaps that's too far in the, uh, or too out in the future, too out in the future, but can you give us a little taste of, of what you have planned? Well, I'm still working on the specifics, but I can definitely say we will be highlighting Panther Creek State Park with all of their hiking trails and all of their mountain bike trails, as well as highlighting Morristown as Tennessee's disc golf capital. Uh, you know, we, I, I, I'm glad you brought that, those two words up, disc golf. I love that. We have four disc golf courses in Morristown. Um, disc golf started in Morristown in, I believe it was 2012. Um, we are the host of the Tennessee State Disc Golf Championships. Oh. The tournament this year will be, well, it's always the first weekend in June. This year's dates are June or May 31st through June 2nd. We bring historically about 600 disc golfers from around the country into Morristown to play in this tournament. Um, a couple of years ago, we had a player from London, England. Oh, boy. So we were really, we were really excited about that. We've gone international. Um, but we had um we have we have four great courses. They were all designed by HB Clark with Bluegrass Disc Golf. And he ran our tournament um up until last year. He has turned over the tournament to another professional disc golfer who happens to be from the Tri-Cities, Johnson City area. Mm -hmm. um, so he'll be running our tournament this year. And we, there is never a time that you cannot see disc golfers out on one of our courses, except for a week ago when we had 10 inches of snow. Oh, 10 inches. Okay. Yeah. And 10 inches of snow, uh, snow and ice. Okay. I don't believe there were any disc golfers out then, but they're out in force all the time. I I have to admit, well, there's two things I have to admit. I, I'm well, one is I've never heard of disc golf before I started to research our episode. And I have played golf before very poorly. I, I'm wondering maybe that disc golf could be a way for me to get back uh, onto the golf course and get some uh, steps in. Those... Well, it's interesting because a lot of golf course, ball, we differentiate between ball golf and disc golf. Right. A lot of ball golf courses kind of in the off season mm -hmm. put in temporary baskets where mm -hmm. people can play disc golf. Okay. So it's, it's, it's interesting. And it's one of those sports. It's a lot less inexpensive. Then ball golf. 
I can imagine. You can start playing disc golf for probably around 50 bucks. Okay. Buying the discs that you need. Now, I am not a disc golfer. That was going to be my next question, by the way. No, I am not a disc golfer. I, it was funny when I came to work here, um, I, there were discs obviously in my office from previous, my previous, my predecessor. And I thought, oh, great. I'll take these home for the dogs. And then (laughs) I picked one up. And if I threw one of those at my dogs and it hit them, it would kill them. Oh my. Because they're very, they're different weights. They're different designs. It's it's fascinating. It's not frisbee. When mm-hmm. somebody says frisbee golf, disc golfers cringe because it's got nothing to do with a frisbee. You, you know, something I have to admit, that is what was going through my mind. And, and I'm so glad you clarified that. And I'm actually very excited. So when I do get out to Field Fest, I, I will be one of the guests there. And I look forward to meeting you in person. But I'm excited to get out on the course and learn how to play disc golf. I may find my next outdoor activity i think is well that is absolutely one of the things we're going to do and we're going to play the panther creek course okay which is the disc golfers that come in for the tournament as well as the locals refer to it as the monster because it'll kill you (laughs) there are lots of hills there's lots of roughage there are trees You've got to shoot through. It's it's a tough course. Okay. When we have so, the tournament, of course, it's pro, it's a pro am tournament. Right. Pros, the amateurs play the other three courses: mm-hmm. Cherokee, Rotary, and Kiwanis. Mm-hmm. The pros play three rounds at Panther Creek. Oh because wow! It's so difficult. Okay. This is very cool. I am so excited and. I, and I have to also, I want to ask a question. How's the fishing up in your area? Cherokee Lake is awesome. Cherokee Lake was one of the top bass lakes in the Southeast. We have numerous fishing tournaments in every year. In fact, um, we just had a fishing tournament this past Saturday, both winter and spring, summer. Um, we get a lot of fishing tournaments. And we have a lot of of leisure folks with their pontoon boat or whatever who are out fishing. We're primarily bass. You basically will find just about anything, um, any fish you'd want in Cherokee Lake. Okay. Okay. One of my spirits of full disclosure, uh, I say that a lot, I find, is I've never been fishing. I mean, I, I may have caught a bluegill on a dock somewhere in one of the Michigan lakes where I grew up, but I've never really been fishing. And with the OWAA, there's a lot of anglers out there. And so there's one in particular uh, who has uh, offered, Howard, I'm going to be at this event. I think we're going to help you uh, take that off your bucket list. We're going to get you, we're going to get, get, put a rod in your hands. We're going to get, we're going to keep it there until you catch something. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, what? I, I'm not an angler. Uh, I think the last time I fished, I was probably about nine or 10. And of course, someone else had to bait my hook for me because I'm a typical girl in a worm. In fact, when I was probably in high school, my folks had a, a trailer up in a lake in Ohio where I grew up. And I take that back. I would fish then, but I, I would use dried beef as bait. There you go. Yeah. So I'm curious not to put you on the spot, but I guess I am putting you on the spot. No disc golf, no fishing. What's your go-to outdoor sport of choice? Hiking and mountain biking. My, okay. Me personally, yeah. or, oh, me personally. Well, spectator-wise football. Okay. I mean, I am an Ohio State Buckeye. Are you allowed to say that in Tennessee? Yes, I am, because... You were born there. I'm also... Were... I was, Well, no, I lived in Ohio until uh, the early 2000s. Okay, so you're allowed to say that then. Yeah, and my father is from Tennessee. Of course, okay. 
Um, but my license plate, my vanity license plate has the Ohio State logo and the Tennessee logo on it. So I have okay. all my bases covered. Okay. Yeah, I, I have all my bases covered. So yeah. spectator wise, football, and if you can call it a sport, well, I used to play tennis, yeah. but now I have two bad knees. Okay. So I don't play tennis. I'm not a sports girl. All right. All right. Fair enough. Well, was... I was okay. before that, before the, before the knees went. Well, I got to tell you, I sit at a desk a lot, whether it's podcasting like today or my coaching work. And, you know, outside of Las Vegas, where I'm located, there's some wonderful hiking and biking that I need to get more involved with. And I actually think now that you've described this disc golf course, the monster, I may need to get out well before this event just to get some exercise in. In addition to disc golf, we've got hiking, we've got fishing, uh, the, you spoke about mountain biking. What are some of the other go-to outdoor activities that a family couple would partake in if they, if they want to get out and just enjoy the environment? Well, we have a lot of outdoor events um, in the warmer weather. We have, like I said before, we have a wonderful park system. And one of the parks is known as the Downtown Green. And it is on the southern edge of downtown, um, along with the Farmer's Market Pavilion. And we have a lot of events on the downtown green. There's our monthly uh, April through November, first Friday concert on the green. While that ha that is happening right next door at the Farmer's Market Pavilion, there is what is known as a night market, which is a craft vendor show that goes on during the concert. We've got some great festivals. We have an international food festival that happens in August. Yeah. Arts in the Park that happens in September. Mountain Macon's Festival, which is a tribute to Appalachian culture and life in this area. That's always the fourth weekend in October. Um, we've got a really, we've got a cool business downtown called the Pink Pig. Mm. And a lot of families go in there. You can work on the pottery wheel. You can paint your own pottery. So a lot of families go in there and have kind of a little family event where they all, you know, paint a piece of pottery or we'll do something like them together. Okay. Um, sure. But yeah, our, our, our city and county parks are big draws. Okay. Because almost every park has got wonderfully paved walking trails. So again, we go back to the accessibility of our parks. Okay. And what I, I, I'm curious too, is so we've got the outdoor activities and, and I, I, I suppose this question is going to be the same for everybody. Since you're officially the first guest, it may not be the or first in the order that we publish. Uh, I have to give that to visit Johnson City and the oh sure Northeast Tennessee. I have to do that. You're the second. You're the second guest. Is this area a, a four season absolutely opportunity? With the exception of two weeks ago, exception of two weeks ago, it is a it's an an all season destination. Absolutely. Okay. Because there are people who like to hike in 20 degree weather. 20 degrees is not so bad. I mean, look, it could be 130 degrees in Death Valley in about, what are we, February? In about four months, it's going to be 130 degrees in Death Valley. So that's a place you don't want to go hike. But 20 degrees Panther is fine. Creek, well, in fact, Tennessee State Parks sponsor hikes on New Year's Day. All of okay. the state parks that obviously have hiking trails sponsor a new year's day hike on new year's day so that's the dead of winter okay fair enough so i'm curious and and i think we're going to end up doing this for all of the episodes if you're a let's just say a couple with a couple young kids maybe six to ten ish range nice nice little range 
and they're going to come, or or let's just say an a, a older couple are going to come to this area, Morristown, for the first time. They've heard about it. They heard this podcast, and they say, that sounds like a cool place. I Anne did such a great job describing it. I want to go visit it. So what are some of the must-do activities, sites, places, perhaps places to sleep? So we got to put our bed in the head for a weekend, restaurants. For me, I have to have a coffee shop, so we'll talk about that after. But what are, what's, what would be some of the, the, the top 10 lists that you would suggest for this family and then perhaps for this couple? Well, lodging, of course, we have a, a lot of the major chains, of a course. lot of the major flag. We also have a lot of vacation rentals, okay. Airbnbs, VRBO. Okay. So if you want a home environment, there are plenty of those around. You just get on their websites, type in Cherokee Lake, and they're going to tell you where it is. Right. All I would say, as for coffee shops, we have quite a few. Okay. And and I am a coffee addict, so I have tried them all and can recommend all of them. You you and I are going to be best buds then, because okay. I'm a coffee guy. So I haven't I, even I, picked up my coffee here, and there's my logo. I, well. All right. Cheers. Because I can't play favorites. Okay. I'll tell you in person my favorite. Okay. All right. <laughs> are are uh, there uh, boutique? Some of the, some of the are... must have must sees beside outdoor activities. Okay. Brand new attraction that is still deciding what hours they're going to be open, but you can schedule tours is the Grove Wood baseball museum oh really wow oh this place is so awesome it is all the private collection of a local real estate developer who just happens to be the one of the good friends of my boss here at the chamber his collection got too big and his wife told me he had to do something with it so he rented a space in one of our shopping centers uh-huh. and has done, I don't know who designed it for him, but they did an excellent job. He has artifacts. He has one of the uniforms from uh, several movies. He has, it's just, I'm, I'm speechless when I talk about this because it is just, so incredible. You could spend half a day in this museum looking at everything. He has Beautiful. the original seat, two original seats from Crosley Field, which I loved being from Southwest Ohio because I saw my first professional baseball game at Crosley Field. Okay. He has seats from he has seats from everywhere. I think he's got seats from Ebbets Field. Okay. He has he has all kinds of uniforms. He does special meet and greets with Hall of Famers. Mm. Um, it's just an incredible museum. And you would think, oh, baseball museum, it's only going to be the guys and the kids. Mm-hmm. There was a group in this week that was predominantly women. Mm-hmm. And they have commented all over Facebook about how cool this museum it was, and they did it. They had a great time, and everybody should see this museum. And it's free. Wow, very nice. That that's that's wonderful. That's yeah, wonderful. another must see is the Crockett Tavern Museum, uh-huh. which is on the actual site of the tavern that David Crockett's parents owned. And okay. where Crockett spent his boyhood, okay. it's obviously the building is a reproduction. They have all kinds of artifacts. It's a wonderful museum. It's open May through October, so it will be open when the heavy travel seasons. Right. That's a must-see, especially for kids. Kids love that museum. Mm-hmm. Another one of our museums is the General Longstreet Museum, which is... A Civil War Museum, General James Longstreet spent the winter of 18, 
62, 63 in this area and used this house as his headquarters. And of course, the interesting thing about East Tennessee, East Tennessee was very much divided during the Civil War. There were folks who fought for the Union and folks who fought for the Confederacy. Right. And this museum tries to tell the story of both. Right. So it's it's a great educational museum as well. And a really neat thing is the museum director, he's a fairly young guy, he is also a professional tailor. And he makes all of the reenactment uniforms for a lot of the reenactment groups. Mm -hmm. So not only are you going to learn history, you're going to learn uniform history as well. Right. So... And then we've got our downtown. We are known for our second story sidewalk system. I saw that on one of the uh, on one of the pages on the website, and I was like, "Wow, how'd they do that? Or what happened that they did that?" That was an urban renewal project in the nineteen sixty. Okay. okay. Um, Main Street, Turkey Creek runs underneath Main Street, okay. and so Main Street, unfortunately. Um, was the recipient of a lot of flooding. Mm -hmm. So during the early 60s, um, there was a big urban renewal push for downtown. Turkey Creek was rerouted, and the store business and store owners along Main Street paid to have this elevated sidewalk put in and to ge also to generate second-story business be it for offices or apartments or things mm -hmm. like that. Um, right now, there are mainly, we have an art gallery um, above one of the businesses on the second story. A lot of it are offices. There are several photography studios up there. There are several residences up there. A lot of the building owners are now working on their second and third floors to decide what they're going to do up there. And there are a lot of very ambitious plans. So very we're really nice. excited about that. Okay. So I am curious if, and I am going to have to put you on the spot. I'm sorry about this, but if, if I come visit your town and I want a good breakfast or a lunch or a meal, Where's that first place that's going to come to mind? Because I'm a food. I mean, I, I, I'm a foodie. I like my coffee. I have to have my my tea, my tea, my unsweetened iced tea. But but where are you going to send me? There are two places for breakfast. Okay. Hillbilly's Cabin. Okay. Or the Davy Crockett Restaurant. Okay. I'll go ahead and tell you my personal favorite for that's breakfast. Okay. Is All right. Hillbilly Cabin. Okay. The best home fries on the face of the earth. All right. Yeah, it's, and they do a bit, uh, everything they have, it's good. But I, I'm a, I like a good breakfast. And okay. their breakfasts are all of them. Okay. And pretty reasonable. Okay. And if, if for the kids... And if I'm going to take a souvenir home with me, what am I going to take? Oh, wow. Besides the disc. Besides the disc. I would say they would, that the kids could do something in at the Pink Pit. Okay. Pink Pit Pottery Studio. They I'd Go in and make your own souvenir. Okay. Fair That's enough. That's what I would recommend. Or now, you can always get something at one of the two museums. But I think if you want something that no one else would have, right. you would make something at Pink Pig. Okay. Now, I'm also a photographer, and there's a lot of photographers in the OWAA. Where is, in the Morristown area that, that you serve, where is the go-to spot? Like, you have to have a photo of, with this in your background, or you sitting on it or in front of it. Where's that go-to place? Well, you're obviously going to want to get a picture of downtown with the overhead sidewalks. Okay. And there are a lot of great photographs of that. You definitely are going to want to get a photograph of 
Cherokee Lake from the Overlook at Panther Creek State Park. Those two are the ones that I see most of from people posting on Facebook after they've been here. Okay, very good. And really now, anywhere out at Panther Creek State Park is is wonderful. Okay, and I imagine the birding is also very good in the in, at the park. So because yeah. yeah, there's a lot of birders, I like yeah. photography and. Uh, others like to just to bring their scopes and check out the birds. Okay. Right. What's, what's the bird? And maybe if, hopefully, you know, the, this answer and if that will find it, we'll find it. But what's the, what's the, the, the bird that's so well known within your area that people like it, like where I grew up in Michigan, in, well, I grew up in Michigan. I live in Chicago. I had cardinals. At the beginning of the spring, that's what I knew the wi winter was ending and spring was coming is the cardinals would come back. So what's that bird, that, that, that chirping sound that like, okay, the season's changing, weather's going to warm up. What, what's that, what's that go-to bird? Cardinals. Cardinal? Okay. Well, listen, and I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, join us on, on the podcast and to kind of help celebrate uh, this inaugural uh, field, uh, event with the OWA Field Fest. And uh, I know there's going to be a lot of your peers are going to be there. Hopefully a lot of uh, members of the OWAA and hopefully folks that maybe hear this podcast and are, want to learn more about Morristown, want to learn more about the OWAA. And this is going to be an opportunity for them to show up and enjoy as well. And it sounds like we're going to have a lot of activities and you guys are going to keep us really, really busy. And you're going to actually feed us pretty well. So maybe we'll I have a so. chance to get some of those home fries. And you can then tell me about your favorite coffee place. Because I roast my own. So I'm very picky about my coffee. So it's uh, Oh, very wow. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, life is, I have to have coffee in the morning. I can't. And oh, so, me too. Me yeah. too. I, I have the big Ray Don coffee mug. Yeah. Three of those before I even can think about facing the world. There you go. I, I, I'm right there with you. So, Ann, again, I'm so glad uh, you were able to join us today and uh, learn a lot about you and a lot about Morristown and the the, 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 the town as well as the parks and the the exciting uh, opportunities to to really get out and explore and experience the best of of your area. So thank you again for spending time with us. Well, thank you so much, Howard, and we look forward to seeing everyone at Field Fest. Very good. Now, before I do let you go, if our listeners would like to learn more about you and the, uh, Morristown, where are the best places for them to go? Visit morristowntn.com, and we are on Facebook and Instagram. Visit Morristown TN. Very good. Well, we'll have... Uh, those links, as well as the you know, the uh, a lot of the sites that you had recommended in our show notes, we'll have links back to them, and this will give our people an opportunity to check it out when they listen to the podcast and visit uh, our website. Again, Anne, it's been a pleasure. Stay on the line. We're going to do a quick close, and then you and I can have a final chat, okay? Okay. Thank you, Howard. Very good. All right, folks, we have just been chatting with Ann Ross. She's the, the Director of Tourism for the Morristown Chamber of Commerce in Northeast Tennessee. Ann is one of the regional partners uh, who is uh, joining with Visit Johnson City and other regional partners in hosting the OWAA's inaugural Field Fest event in July. I am like really excited to be there. I'm also going to be speaking there uh, I have a short presentation on podcasting, why everybody needs to either host a podcast or be on a podcast. So I'm excited, and I just know I'm going to be enjoying this area. I'm going to learn how to play disc golf, and um, I think I may even be fishing for the first time. So I'm really excited there. Listen, do go out to the, their website, visit morristowntn.com, as well as visit their Facebook uh, and Instagram pages. We'll provide those backlinks as well. As for us, you can find uh, this episode on our website, OutdoorAdventureSeries.com. We also have our, our Outdoor Adventure Series pages on LinkedIn and Facebook. We also are present on Instagram as well. 
uh, YouTube. We're going to have the video of this episode up on YouTube. So you'll be able to see the full interview. You get that nice background of, I think I've got Appalachia behind me here with the Visit Morristown, Tennessee logo. So thanks for, to Ann for uh, sharing that. And of course, wherever you listen to your podcast, just search for Outdoor Adventure Series and you will find us. Now, if you do get to this episode or any other episode, please make sure you like, comment, and share because that's not only what helps our podcast grow, but that's what helps promote the these destinations like Morristown. This is where the power of podcasting really comes in. So please like, comment, and share. And again, thanks again uh, to Visit Johnson City and all of the regional partners for collaborating on this podcast series. Okay, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. And we look forward to having you join us for a future episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Take care now.